Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me, I got a 2012 Nissan Rogue and we are going to be replacing the lower control arm today. The bushing has failed and the ball joint is very loose and the car has very loose steering. And that's why we're gonna be replacing this today. Now, before we go ahead and begin guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's repairs. So first things first, you're going to have to remove the wheel. I've already gone ahead and done that for everyone. So uh, support the car, move the wheel, get it out of the way. And we're going to want to begin, guys. And this is my explanation of this. I'm going to have to explain it before I even do it. Is I'm going to loosen the strut off of the knuckle to be able to get a little bit more leverage on the lower control arm. But I'm going to be doing that when I reinstall it, not when I remove it. Uh, the main reason being is that the bolts that go towards the front of the control arm you guys will see here in a little bit when we remove them they can be quite of a i guess you could say a pain to say the least about them because they got to go in at a certain angle and if this strut is putting pressure down on it we will always have to fight it so you will see me leave it be in the beginning and then when we go to reinstall it we are going to remove it i just want to get that out of the way in case anybody gets confused uh, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started on this control arm. I have you guys positioned on the bottom. We are going to be removing our ball joint starting off with. And what I like to do is go ahead and hit this with a little bit of penetrating oil. Not because uh, the ball joint itself loosening in there so much. Mainly to get some oil in there so we can get our bolt out. The way this is going to work is on this end, I'm going to be holding it with my 18 millimeter and on the other end I'm gonna go ahead and put my gun on there and remove it uh, it's gonna be quite simple uh, there's gonna be a nut on the other side now what I'm gonna do is come in here and go ahead and blast this off and you want to be careful because it's kind of shallow here so make sure you got a good grip on it and now that we have our nut off we are going to go ahead and put that to the side and I'm going to get my extension because if you noticed this uh, bolt didn't move much of anything at all so I'm going to put my gun on it and we're going to go ahead and try to spin that in the barrel now sometimes uh, they can be rather difficult and this is the part that is the scariest so I'm going to get an adapter here to see if we can put the gun a little bit closer so we can try to transmit more torque on here. Now a lot of you may be wondering, hey that's a little bit excessive, why would you just continue spinning it off on there like that? Main reason is because I'm trying to break all the rust free that's holding that bolt on and then what I'm going to do is come from the back side and go ahead and use a hammer to pull it off and this will be very evident right here. See all that rust, you see the little uh, yellowing or oranging, that's what will hold it in place. When I'm spinning it I'm trying to loosen that up. One thing I could have done is sprayed it after I removed the bolt and it was spinning a little bit. It would have gotten some oil in the bolt areas and that would have made it come off just a little bit easier. But you want to make sure you can get this bolt off. That's why I choose to spin it. Now that we have that off, uh, it's going to be uh, not easier I guess you can say because this job does have a few annoying parts to it. But at least one of the major worries is out of the way. So let me go ahead and get you guys focused in on the next part of this. We are going to be removing our rearward bushing. I have you guys positioned in the rear where our rearward bushing is going to be. And we have to go ahead and loosen that up. This is also an 18 millimeter and what I find is you don't really need to oil this or anything. These usually come off pretty good. And the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to take a 18 millimeter and put it up top to hold my bolt. And then we are going to go ahead and blast it off with our impact gun. I always find this one comes off pretty easy. I've never really had it fight me. Uh, sometimes it will just depending on the level of rust. But for the most part, you can pretty much just get in there and take it off just like that. It's a uh, pretty easy peasy to say the least. Now that we have that off, we also have to remove 
our two other bolts that I'm going to show you. They're located right up here. One of them is going to be covered up by the stabilizer bar. I don't like to remove the stabilizer bar, so what I do is just gently pry it out of the way and get my tool in there to be able to get the bolts off. Now, these are going to be the hardest bolts, guys. That's why we have to loosen up our knuckle after we get this off. And we have our new control arm and supported with the rear bushing because uh, the angle on them is just horrible. But you guys will see here in a second. Before we go ahead and remove those bolts, what I like to do is get rid of this cover. It's always in the way and it doesn't really uh, play nice when you're trying to do this job. So what I do is I just go ahead and I'm gonna use my pocket knife to remove the clips just by popping out the center. There should be several of these. Now this car is older. Uh, as you guys can see, it looks like uh, someone chewed through the liner here at some point in time. Uh, so we're going to be missing a few of these and a few of these might break which uh, I'm not too worried about it because we do have replacements. I keep a lot of these clips on hand. Uh, you can go online and just buy a 200 piece kit for 20 bucks or so. Um, so they're very common nowadays. And once you remove whatever clips you have or if you have all of them, uh, which we didn't, we're going to go ahead and slide our cover off. Gives us just a little bit more room here so we can get our tools in uh, so that way we can get our bolts off. I'm going to throw you guys into position and show you the two bolts that are going to fight us. I have you guys zoomed in pretty far, but right where the axle is, right here underneath, you have one 21 millimeter and a secondary 21 millimeter. It's very difficult to see, but it's these two bolts. You'll see they're on the forward bushing that holds the control arm in. These are going to be 21 millimeters and they can be quite stubborn. I always find these are uh, the bane of my existence when I'm doing this job because getting them in is probably the worst. Now this forward one is usually not that bad. You can get a 21 millimeter in there and just go ahead and blast it off. Just like that, you guys can see, comes off, uh, at least the forward facing one. But the second bolt that we have to remove, those don't like to come off because they are held uh, kind of in a tight jam. If you notice, if I try to take my uh, tool here and put it on there, my stabilizer link gets in the way. The way I remedy this is I just pry it out of the way. I'm going to have to move the camera back here a little bit and show you guys a little bit of a visual on how I do this. But what I like to do is I come in here, I'll pry just a little bit on it. Now, keep in mind, we did remove our rear bolt. So if the controller moves a little bit, uh, that's to be expected. Uh, now that I have it in there, what I'm gonna also do is make sure I tap it just to make sure that I got it all the way in. Now removing them isn't that horrible. Um, Unless they're seized in there, typically it's not the worst job you could do. But when it comes to reinstalling them, that's where I find it can be quite challenging. So let me get my gun on here, see if we can get this one off. And as you guys saw right there, perfect example. It is uh, not lined up perfectly, so we're going to have to grab the pry bar again and do this uh, again. Now, you don't have to necessarily use the style setup of tools that I use. Um, you could probably go in there with a hand ratchet and a wrench or something from the other side. However, I don't like that uh, theory or that concept of it simply because, uh, you know, I, these can be on there quite, quite uh, strongly, I guess you can say. So there you go. Second uh, attempt went a lot better. We were able to get it off. And now our control arm should be pretty much just free floating in there. And I'm going to zoom you guys back out and show you guys how we remove it. Have you guys zoomed back out. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull out on my control arm and swing it around. The ball joint is still attached. That's why it's not going to fall on you or anything. And what I like to do at this stage is take my hammer and grab my control arm from some point and just start tapping it downward and it'll release it from the ball joint. I'm gonna have to switch up angles here guys. Uh, do it from the back just because there's a little bit more room there for me. But I'm gonna do the same thing from back here. We're just gonna tap it and we're gonna go ahead and get our control arm off and I'll be right back with you guys. 
All right, guys, so we were able to get our control arm. This is what you are going to be left with. And to give you guys a nice idea, this ball joint, pretty much done for. And this bushing as well. Uh, the camera may not pick it up too good here, but let me get a light. Uh, notice how it just cracked up. All the bushings are uh, pretty much done for on it. Uh, the best example is actually right back here. Look at that cut in there. So that's the reason why we're going to be replacing these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab my new control arm and we are going to set it up and get this puppy installed. So I went ahead and I got my new part and I just want to take a quick second to share this with you guys. These are sided. There's a left and a right. So if you're working on a particular side and you're only doing the one, make sure you get the correct arm. Uh, they're not the same part number. They uh, are different parts here for left versus right. Uh, and if you're doing the passenger side, now we've already done it because that control arm was in bad shape too. It's the exact same process that we're doing on this driver's side, guys. Uh, just copy it to a T, same exact thing, just on the other side. So now that we got that out of the way, we're going to take our control arm, we're going to reinstall it. And I'm going to have you guys zoomed out on the reinstallation of me sliding it in. But I always start with the rearward bushing. Uh, I'm going to slide it in and then get my bolt through it. And then we're going to slide our control arm and get this uh, puppy lined up or as best as we could and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now uh, just put it in any which way it'll slide so it's not really a, a big deal to get it perfect at this stage you guys you just want to get it in there in a general way and we're going to take our bolt here and see if we can't line it up here all the way now I always like to put my bolt into place just to hold it in now this one is fighting just a little bit the bushing is caught on the top so what i'm going to do is just give it a light tap here if i can if it's going to let me and that should be good right about there all right so our bolt has pushed through and I'm going to take my nut and I'm just going to put it on there. That's all we're doing. We're not tightening it. I'm just uh, using it uh, on there to hold it. Now, to give you guys a great example of what it should look like, you should be looking at something like this. This is how I installed it. And now all you have to do is just go ahead and push it down, raise it up over your frame, and get it somewhat lined up. Now that we slid our control arm into place, the main reason that this will fight you is if you look at this guys, there's going to be some weight on the control arm. It's going to want to push it down. And when you put this bolt in, it takes a lot of force. You got to make sure to get it in there perfectly as to not to strip it. And that is why I like to remove the knuckle assembly and just kind of, you know, leave it loose. So that way there's no force or anything uh, pushing down on it. The way I do this is we're going to install our lower ball joint first. So I'm going to have to raise the vehicle and show you guys that process. And then we are going to dislocate our strut tower from our knuckle assembly. All right, guys. So we are going to reinstall this lower ball joint. And I'm not going to be tightening it up or anything. I just want to make sure that it goes into the knuckle because it will help support it. And all you should be doing is getting it lined up. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of rust in there and it'll cause it to not want to go in. You can use a little hammer just to tap it into place on the control arm. Uh, do not hit on the bottom of this ball joint because that is actually where the grease cup is. So I just tap on the sides here and it'll go in. If it fails to go in, like this one because it's being a little stubborn what you can do is just gently rock back on the arm and you guys saw right there we've got it in the correct spacing and go ahead and push up on it now I'm using the hammer and I'm hitting the actual arm nowhere near the ball joint uh, I'm using the actual steel on the arm and it's just tapping it's not gonna damage it uh, if anyone out there is saying, oh no, now it's damaged, it's not, guys. Uh, sometimes you have to tap parts and, uh, you know, hit them into place. It's just how uh, being a mechanic is. Now, next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take our bolt. And this one as well, it's a little stubborn, so we're going to give it some taps. As you guys see, very lightly, nothing real big. 
and then what we're going to do is go ahead and put our nut on the back just hold it into place and we are not tightening anything at this point uh, it's just simply to hold the ball joint everything in place the reason why I put this on there is because when you separate the knuckle from the top that we're going to do in a second, your knuckle will have no support at that stage. Uh, so I like to put this in there. It is a little bit of a struggle to install your ball joint after your control arm is bolted in because you're not going to have that movement on there. Not that it's impossible, but I just find it's easier this way, at least for me. It may not be for you. Some of you may not even want to dislocate the strut. You may want to just fight it through, and that's okay too. It's uh, whatever uh, you know you prefer. I just prefer not to fight it too much. I've kind of developed this method over the years. To remove our strut to our knuckle, what we're going to do is go ahead and pull back on our ABS wire. And what we're going to want to do here, and I need two hands for this, so we're going to remove the little holder for the abs wire on the strut and the one that's on the knuckle uh, gives you a little bit more flexibility and what we're going to do is take our impact gun here and put it on our nut side and we're going to hold the bolt with a wrench and these come off fairly easy if no one's been in there before to over tighten it they should come off quite easily uh, what I find is sometimes people over torque these uh, especially if they've had them off before now the last one that you remove will have a little bit of pressure on it it's to be expected because you guys see that the knuckle is trying to push out and the way I remove this one is I just push back and I will grab it and kind of rock it back and forth and you will get it to release and you will get your bolt just that easy now that we have that off you guys saw that our knuckle assembly kind of fell down and what we're going to do is just separate the two uh, now that we have this nice and loose what i'm going to do is go ahead and raise the vehicle and i'm going to put a jack underneath it so we can hold the weight of this knuckle assembly and that'll pretty much take the weight off of all of this and give us easy flexibility to line up our bolt holes to give you guys a good idea this is how my setup looks like i got this uh jack stand that i use it's an undercar stand and i hoisted it up and underneath here and lifted up my knuckle assembly and my shock is off to the side my control arm is almost pretty much level with the frame and my bolt holes are lining up a lot more freely and there's not a whole lot of tension on there because i can easily remove it and maneuver it however i want now i'm going to try to get you guys zoomed in here and you guys can see me reinstalling these bolts i'll give you guys a quick snippet because it's a very tight area i'm probably going to be blocking it most of the time but i'll just give you guys a general overview so now that we have everything set up i like to use this tool i call these lady slippers uh, they have this really nice end that goes into the frame now i'm going on the bolt hole that i don't know how well you guys will see it on the camera because i'm mainly focused on this outer one but i'm gonna go on my secondary bolt you guys can see how easily i can position this and then what i'm gonna do is take my bolt and just using my little bar i can easily maneuver it how i need to now i'm gonna have to do this off camera guys because where the camera is where i need to be to be able to see uh, i wanted to show you guys a quick snippet this is a difficult part just the best advice i can give you is make sure that you do not try to force this on there and strip it if you do you are in a world of hurt because that bolt threads into the subframe uh, there's enough that's holding on there and if uh, that were to strip out i mean you're pretty much needing a subframe it's as easy as that unless you can remedy it by tapping it or doing something uh, but i'm just very careful with these i take my time so i'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my lower bolts and get those tightened up and i'll bring you guys back in I've already gone ahead and tightened up my two bolts back here guys it was a struggle uh, it took me about 10 15 minutes just fighting them and uh next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and throw our strut and knuckle assembly back into place uh, all you have to do is just make the two together uh, we didn't really change any positioning here and i'm going to lift it up here and sometimes these will fight you a little bit uh if you have that tool that I showed you, which uh, is uh, this little guy right here. What you can do is go ahead and use this to line up your bolt holes and go ahead and slide in your hardware. Now I just simply grab this and lift it up or down depending on how I needed uh, to get everything lined up. Once you have most of this lined up, it falls into place pretty quick. 
Now this one here is in. I'm going to need my hammer to tap it in there just to, you know, kind of defeat the rust that's going on. Just like that. Go ahead and tap it in. And then we are going to take our nut, put it on the other side. And go ahead and do the same thing with the top. Now the top you're going to have to push inward like this. And just kind of rock it back and forth. The bolt will go in. It should already be lined up. You shouldn't really need to pry it or anything. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do is just kind of move this wiring out the way. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten this up and get everything torqued into place. Now that we've tightened and torqued everything, what we need to do is go ahead and push our little holders for our ABS wire back into place. They're just little grommets. Uh, they slide right in, really simple and easy. Uh, don't forget this step, because if you do, you could damage your ABS wire. Uh, these are very easily overlooked. Uh, I sometimes will forget them, and then when I retrace my steps, because uh, that's one thing that I always do is before I let the car go, I always uh, go over, make sure every little nut and bolt is tightened up. And uh, I found them to, uh, let's say, not be pushed into place sometimes. Now this one here is fighting me. I'm gonna have to reposition the camera like I just did. And there you go, pushes right in, nice and easy. Now we're gonna go up underneath the car and we are going to uh, tighten our bolts. I'm not gonna cover it, guys, but we're going to tighten our bushing bolt right there. Uh, you can just tie it up with the wheels off the ground. You don't really have to put weight on the suspension or anything of that nature when you're doing this. And then we will uh, go ahead and tighten up our ball joint bolt. But I'm going to go ahead and tighten up this one first. I got to lift the car in order to do that. We went ahead and we got this bolt tightened up. Uh, it went pretty easy. Uh, doesn't really require you uh, cranking it on there. Uh, the next thing that we are going to tighten up and it's going to be a little hard to see guys, but we're going to go ahead and tighten up our ball joint bolt. Uh, make sure that uh, that is nice and secure so our ball joint doesn't pop out. And uh, once we do that, I'll bring you guys back in. Now that we have the ball joint and everything tightened up, we are back up top. And what we are going to do is go ahead and reinstall the cover that we took off earlier. Uh, little things like this sometimes uh, don't go back on a car. Sometimes uh, it's real easy to forget these. But I'm going to go ahead and reinstall this. I'm gonna get my clips ready to hold it into place. And fortunately for this customer, um, I found the right ones and I have so many of them, I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, new ones wherever they were missing. Uh, once I have my cover on, I'm gonna go ahead and throw my wheel on the car, tighten up my wheel, and then I'll be all set. And that's pretty much how you replace a lower control arm on these guys. All right, guys, so that is how you replace a lower control arm on a Nissan Rogue. It's quite simple. Uh, it can be a little bit of stressful when it comes to those two front bolts. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward and uh, easygoing. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. It definitely helps the channel grow. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.